Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to do my February TBR. All right, everybody, it is already that time. It is time to do the February round of the My Bad TBR game as well as my challenge polls. But of course, before we get into all of that, we have to recap how I did with January. So starting with the challenge polls, the very first challenge poll I did was to read Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. That was in the challenge cup because it was a recommendation from one of you. One of y'all recommended it to me when I asked for your recommendations on the project announcement video that I did where I said that I was going to be reading like my subscribers for a year. So if you haven't left your recommendations, please feel free to do so, I will try to remember to leave the link to that video down below. But the person who recommended this book to me was Amanda Booktopia, and I did read that. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. And as always, if you want my full in depth thoughts on the books that I'm reading, you can check out the bi weekly reading vlogs that I'm posting on my channel. The next challenge poll was actually a challenge prompt, and it was to read a book related to going for the gold. And I actually used Fourth Wing to satisfy that prompt because, first of all, the book is entirely gold, and so I figured I could use that for relating to the word gold. But also, there are like competitive style things within the story and I feel like that fits the whole going for the gold in terms of like Olympic competitions and things like that so that worked out perfectly. Then the next challenge poll was actually another book recommended by y'all and that was Last One at the Party by Bethany Clift. This was recommended to me by Nana so thank you so much Nana. I did read that one and enjoyed that one as well. Yet another recommendation from y'all was the next challenge poll with Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett and unfortunately this was a DNF for me. It just was not working for me unfortunately. It was very boring in my opinion. I had a lot of technical issues with it. I believe my thoughts and feelings on the story overall will be in the next vlog that's going to be coming out after this video goes live. That vlog is going to be a little late because I had to adjust for my typical end of month content. I'm trying to put those vlogs out every two weeks, but this one's going up a little bit later. So you'll hear more about my thoughts on some of these books in that vlog. And unfortunately, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies was a DNF. And then the final challenge poll was yet another prompt and it was to read a character driven story. And originally I had selected when we were Bright and Beautiful by Jillian Medoff to satisfy this, but I ultimately decided that I was really not interested in reading that story. There was nothing pulling me towards that story. I was not excited to read it. And so instead I went ahead and used Mercury by Amy Jo Burns to satisfy that prompt. This was a book that I picked up because it was a January book of the month selection. It had arrived to me and it was available to me. So I went ahead and read it. That is a very character driven family drama. And so it fit this challenge poll perfectly. And even though I don't necessarily need to take a punishment for challenge polls, and I certainly don't need to take a punishment for a challenge poll that I actually satisfied, I am going to go ahead and unhaul this book because I don't think I'm going to read it in the future. Moving on into the gameplay prompts, the first prompt I needed to satisfy was actually another challenge pull. I got one of my yellow guys into the safety zone and all of the safety zone squares are blank, meaning I have to pull for my challenge cup again. And when I pulled for my challenge cup, I pulled Morgan is my name by Sophie Keach. And I believe it was L from L is in Wonderland that recommended this one to me. But I did read Morgan is my name and I enjoyed it for the most part. I gave it a solid 3.5 stars. It was a pretty pleasurable reading experience. Then I needed to read a book that had summer vibes and I was originally going to use Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies for this, but of course I DNF'd that. So I ended up using The Fury by Alex Michaelides. Again, this was another January book of the month selection that I wanted to go ahead and read and that was definitely a summer vibes book as it's set on a private island in Greece and it ended up working perfectly. Even though I didn't love the book, I gave it a three stars and I think that was being generous. Next, I landed on the prompt to read an author that was new to me and so I was going to be reading a ton of new to me authors in the month. And so I went ahead and selected Bethany Cliff from Last One at the Party. I could have also, of course, used Amy Jo Burns from Mercury. I could have also used Sophie Keach from Morgan Is My Name. I read a lot of new to me authors in January, so I certainly satisfied this prompt. Then I landed on the prompt to read a book talk fave. And for this, I selected The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. And this is another one that when it came time to read it, I just was not interested in it. Even though this book, for all intents and purposes, should be one that I'm really interested in reading. It's kind of like a fake dating, hate to love romance. I have never been pulled to read this book. I've never been drawn to it. There's nothing really inherently interesting about it to me. It's getting a lot of mixed reviews. And again, when it came time to read it, I just didn't want to. I even tried. I put on like the first chapter of it and it just, it wasn't fitting my mood or my vibe or what I was looking for. And even though I know it could have been a right book, wrong time kind of thing, I really think I'm just going to give myself the grace and let it go. So this is another one that I'm unhauling. And instead I used Fourth Wing to satisfy a book talk fave. And then the very final prompt that I landed on was to read a fantasy novel. 
And I was originally going to use Fourth Wing to satisfy this, which of course I did read, but since I'm using that now as a book talk favorite selection, I think I'm gonna go ahead and select Kingdom of Ash to satisfy this. I jumped into Kingdom of Ash immediately after reading Fourth Wing. I'm not technically done with Kingdom of Ash, but I am currently reading it. It's a 900 page story, y'all, and I only have about 350 pages left. So I'm well over the halfway point. I'm well on my way to finishing and I should hopefully finish within the first week of February. So I'm going to use that to satisfy that prompt. All right, so overall, I think we did very well in the month of January. And as always, we're going to start with the challenge pulls. I do think I'm gonna go ahead and select five challenge pulls again. So hopefully these are kind to me. We will see. Again, if I pull a chunky fantasy, I'm going to put it right back in because I am reading Kingdom of Ash and I already know what I'm going to read immediately after Kingdom of Ash. And you'll find out more about that in just a second. Okay, ooh, this one's scrunched up really tight. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna to try to make it so you can actually read it. Autobiography of a Face by Lucy Greeley. This is one that I've never heard of before. It is from user RLB36. And I completely failed to bring my tablet in here to figure out what these books are going to be about. So one moment, please. All right, so I have the book pulled up and it says, at age nine, Lucy Greeley was diagnosed with a potentially terminal cancer. When she returned to school with a third of her jaw removed, she faced the cruel taunts of classmates. In this strikingly candid memoir, Greeley tells her story of great suffering and remarkable strength without sentimentality and with considerable wit. Vividly portraying the pain of pure rejection and the guilty pleasures of wanting to be special, Greeley captures with unique insight what it is like as a child and young adult to be torn between two warring impulses, to feel that more than anything else we want to be loved for who we are, while also wishing desperately and secretly to be perfect. So this is definitely an autobiography. I have never heard of this person. I do not know who she is. This is typically definitely not something that I would ever read, especially a memoir by somebody who I don't know and have no investment in. It says that Lucy Greeley was a poet and memoirist. Oh, and she wrote Autobiography of a Face in 1994. Okay, so this is definitely an older story. And it's not very long at all. It's only 236 pages. So I actually should be able to fly through this one pretty quick. So that is challenge poll number one. All right, challenge poll number two. This is a challenge prompt to read a book by a neurodivergent author. I am going to have to figure out which authors identify as neurodivergent in order to satisfy this prompt. So this is one that I'm going to have to figure out after filming. And then once I know what I'm going to read, I will try to pop it here on the screen if I figure it out. All right, challenge pull number three. All right, let's see. Okay, this one's on the smaller side, so I don't think it's a recommendation. Will Trent. This is actually perfect. I was thinking about reading the next book in the Will Trent series, and I wasn't sure if I was in the mood to do that quite yet, but it looks like I'm going to. So I'm going to be reading book number two in the Will Trent series by Karen Slaughter. If you're not familiar, Will Trent is an agent with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, I believe, and I really enjoyed book number one. So I'm excited to see what's coming in book number two. All right, we've got draw number three. Featuring Indigenous Culture. Okay, this is another one that I'm going to have to take a moment and figure out. So again, another one I'm not going to be able to select right this minute. All right, the final challenge. So this round has definitely been kind of challenging. So we'll see if this next final pull is a little bit kinder to me. Let's see. The Chain by Adrienne McGinty. So this is one that has been on my radar, my TBR for a really long time. It says, the morning starts like any other. Rachel Klein drops her daughter Kylie at the bus stop and heads into her day. But then a cell phone call from an unknown number changes everything. On the line is a woman informing Rachel that she has Kylie bound and gagged in her back seat. And the only way Rachel will ever see her again is if she pays a ransom and kidnaps another child. The caller is a mother herself whose son has also been abducted. And if Rachel doesn't do exactly as she's told, the boy will die and so will Kylie. Rachel is now part of the chain, a terrifying scheme that turns parents from victims into criminals and is making someone else very rich in the process. Rachel is an ordinary woman, but over the coming days, she will be pushed beyond the ordinary limits. She will have to make impossible moral choices and do terrible things. The chain is ruthless, terrifying, and completely anonymous. The rules are simple. Find the money, find your victim, and men commit a horrible act you'd have thought yourself incapable of just 24 hours ago. What the masterminds behind the chain know is that parents will do anything for their children, but what they don't know is that they may have finally met their match. Rachel is smart, determined, and a survivor. So, that actually sounds phenomenal. It sounds like we're going to be following a main character who is trying to break the chain, so to speak. And I'm very interested in it. So I'm excited to get to this one. All right, everybody, that is it for the challenge pulls. Now let's go ahead and jump into the gameplay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next round of the My Bad TBR game. The board should be exactly as I left it. We're going to go ahead and do the standard six draws. So let's go ahead and see what we start out with.
All right, we are starting with the number five and the color green. I only have one active green pawn out on the board. He is right over here. So we are going to do one, two, three, four, five. Shortest book on TBR. All right, so my very first draw was the number five in the color green, and that landed me on the prompt to read the shortest book on my TBR. The shortest book on my TBR is a novella that I can't read yet because I have to read like three other full length books and another novella before I could read this one. It's like the very final one that I would read. So the next shortest book on my TBR is actually The Last Thing to Burn by Will Dean. Will Dean came on my radar with his novel Firstborn, which I read and I absolutely adored it. There were a couple of major twists in that story that I did not see coming. I had no idea what to expect going into it. And so I wanted to pick up this, which I believe is the only other book he had out before Firstborn. And he has a new one that just came out as well. And I've heard really good things about it. It says, on an isolated farm in the United Kingdom, a woman is trapped by the monster who kidnapped her seven years ago. When she discovers she is pregnant, she resolves to protect her child no matter the cost and starts to meticulously plan her escape. But when another woman is brought into the fold, everything changes. New questions must be asked. Can she save herself, her child, and this innocent woman at the same time? Or must she sacrifice the woman to save her baby? Is she doomed to remain a captive for the rest of her life? That just sounds phenomenal. I have a feeling that this is going to be very, very fast paced because it is very short. So we're going to see. I am absolutely willing to give this one a shot. All right, draw number two. All right, we got a nine and a red. Again, I only have one red pawn on the playing field. I'm going to turn the board and we will see what I get. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Multiple timelines. So that means I have to read a book that has at least two different timelines in it. All right, next I drew the number nine and the color red. This landed me on the prompt to read a book with multiple timelines. And I say multiple, but I really feel like just more than one timeline is what I'm going for. So for that, I'm going to select No One Can Know by Kate Alice Marshall. This is the newest release from Kate Alice Marshall. It actually just came out on January 23rd, but this was actually a book of the month release in December. So this came out in book of the month way, way, way early. So I've had it for a couple of months now and I really do need to go ahead and read it. And I'm very excited to get to it after really liking Kate Alice Marshall's adult debut, What Lies in the Woods. This is 14 years ago, the Palmer sisters, Emma, Julia, and Daphne left their home in Arden Hills and never returned. But when Emma discovers she's pregnant and her husband loses his job, she has no option but to return to the house that she and her estranged sisters still own and where their parents were murdered. Emma has never told anyone what she saw the night her parents died, even when she became the prime suspect. But her presence in the house threatens to uncover secrets that have stayed hidden for years and the sisters are drawn together once again. As they face their memories of the past, rivalries restart, connections are forged, and for the first time, Emma starts to ask questions about what really happened that night. The more Emma learns, the more riddles emerge, and Emma begins to wonder just what her siblings will do to keep the past buried, and whether she did the right thing, staying quiet about what was whispered that night. No one can know. So we're going to have a reluctant return home. We're going to have a house where their parents were murdered, and it sounds like maybe her sisters had something to do with her parents' death. I am not sure. There are definitely going to be some deep secrets that are revealed, and I'm absolutely here for this one. So this one absolutely has a past and a present timeline and I'm going to go with that. I'm going to use that to satisfy this prompt. All right, draw number three. All right, I drew an eight and the color yellow. So eight is actually a number that allows me to swap a prompt if I want to. So if I land on a prompt that's not appealing, I can pull a random prompt from a cup that I have. I don't get to actually select the prompt that I want. So I have to really be sure I do not want to satisfy the prompt as is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight start a series. Oh boy. All right, next I drew the number eight and the color yellow and that landed me on the prompt to start a series. And for this, I'm actually going to choose Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I mentioned earlier that I knew exactly what I wanted to read after Kingdom of Ash and this works out perfectly. Y'all know that I've already read this book, but I read it for the first time in 2017 when I was a very, very different reader. And at the time I didn't love it, but I think the reasons I didn't love it wouldn't be an issue for me now. And so I'm going to go into this as the reader I am today. And that's especially important to me because I recently bought this trilogy in beautiful special edition and I don't want to hang on to the special editions if I don't plan on continuing in the series. So I have this paperback. This is what I'm going to be reading. And I definitely wanted to read it with my eyeballs and then listen to it at the same time to see if that also improved my reading experience. This is not very long. This is actually only about 400 pages. So I think that I can get through it pretty, pretty quickly. And I think that I can go ahead and finish Kingdom of Ash in February and also finish this in February as well. So I will be starting the Red Rising series with this one. All right, draw number four.
All right, we got a seven and a yellow. Now seven allows me to break up the movements between more than one pawn. And so this is perfect because this is going to allow me to get this guy into home base. One, two, three, four, five. And then I can do this. Boom, boom. That is second chance. And so what that means is that I will give a second chance to potentially a book or an author that I'm not quite sure about to see if I actually want to continue with them as an author. All right, next I drew the number seven and the color yellow. And this caused me to read a second chance book or author. For this I think I'm going to select The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins and this will actually be a third chance for Rachel Hawkins. I read The Wife Upstairs and I actually really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. It wasn't mind-blowing by any means but it was still one of those thrillers that was a good time. And then I read Reckless Girls and I didn't really like that one. In fact I remember almost nothing about that. That was very mediocre. It was very forgettable. It was nothing that made me want to continue with Rachel Hawkins. And so when her other release The Villa came out I wasn't really interested in picking that one up and I never did. But The Heiress, I really, really like the synopsis of The Heiress. It very much intrigued me and it was a selection for the authentic book box for January. And since I'm restarting that subscription and giving it another try, I thought let's go ahead and put The Heiress into it. So I'm going to go ahead and give Rachel Hawkins another try. And I think if I go into the book expecting it to be nothing mind-blowing, expecting it to be just a good fun time, I think I will get a lot more out of it than if I go into it expecting it to be a substantial thriller. So this is actually a really long synopsis. I don't think I want to read the whole thing, but I'll just read the first few sentences. When Ruby McTavish, Callahan Woodward Miller Kenmore dies, she's not only North Carolina's richest woman, she's also its most notorious. The victim of a famous kidnapping as a child and widow four times over, Ruby ruled the tiny town of Tavistock from Ashby House, her family's estate high in the Blue Ridge Mountains. In the aftermath of her death, that estate, along with a nine-figure fortune and the complicated legacy of being a McTavish, passes to her adopted son, Camden. But to everyone's surprise, Cam wants little to do with the house or the money and even less to do with the surviving McTavishes. Instead, he rejects his inheritance, settling into a normal life as an English teacher in Colorado and marrying Jules, a woman just as eager to escape her own messy past. Ten years later, Camden is a McTavish in name only, but a summons in the wake of his uncle's death brings him and Jules back into the family fold at Ashby House, reminding him why he was so quick to leave in the first place. However, Jules has other ideas, and the more she learns about Cam's estranged family and the twisted secrets they keep, the more determined she is for her husband to claim everything Ruby once intended for him to have. But Ruby's plans were always more complicated than they appeared. Okay, so apparently I basically read most of it. I'm gonna go ahead and stop there, but it sounds like there's going to be family secrets, lies, drama. I'm here for it. It does really intrigue me, the synopsis of this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Rachel Hawkins another shot with the heiress. All right, draw number five. All right, we got a straightforward six and the color blue. Luckily, I have the blue guy right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Free space. Well, that is very kind. Free space means I do not actually have to pick anything for that slot. All right, my fifth draw was the number six and the color blue. This actually landed me on a free space, so I didn't have to select any book for this one, so no book will be chosen. All right, y'all, then we are already at the final draw. The board has been very kind to me. Hopefully, I'm not speaking too soon, but we only have one draw left and four books chosen so far. All right, yellow is getting a lot of play on this round. And since this guy is just right here, I'm gonna move him really quick. One, two, three. And the prompt for that is to read a book with green on the cover. All right, and the very final draw was a number three in the color yellow. And that landed me on the prompt to read a book with green on the cover. And for this, I think I'm kind of pushing it a little bit. There is a little bit of green, but it's more like a tealy blue green color. I think I'm gonna go ahead and select When the Stars Go Dark by Paula McLean. This is a book of the month book that has been on my shelf for a couple of years at this point. For the most part, I have gotten rid of or read the majority of my back list book of the month books but this is one that I've always kept on my shelves because it still really interests me and I think it's time for me to go ahead and read it. It says Anna Hart is a seasoned missing persons detective in San Francisco with far too much knowledge of the darkest side of human nature. When tragedy strikes her personal life Anna desperate and numb flees to the northern California village of Mendocino to grieve. She lived there as a child with her beloved foster parents and now she believes it might be the only place left for her. Yet the day she arrives she learns that a local teenage girl has gone missing. The crime feels frighteningly reminiscent of the most crucial time in Anna's childhood when the un solved murder of a young girl touched Mendocino and changed the community forever. As past and present collide, Anna realizes that she has been led to this moment. The most difficult lessons of her life have given her insight into how victims come into contact with violent predators. As Anna becomes obsessed with saving the missing girl, she must accept that true courage means getting out of her own way and learning to let others in. So that just sounds phenomenal. It sounds right up my alley. And so I'm excited to finally be getting to this one. All right, everybody, that is it. These are the ones that are currently on my TBR along with all of those challenge pulls and things like that. It is definitely going to be a busy reading 
reading month for sure. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books on my TBR and what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a chain or link emoji in honor of the chain by Adrian McGinty. Y'all know that I love seeing your comments. I appreciate the engagement and it definitely helps my channel a lot. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesday, one on Sunday, and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye. Thank you.